Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Toronto Debating Society. Today is Tuesday, December the 2nd. Tonight we have a beginner's debate, and the topic will be e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. I'm going to call on the Prime Minister, Robert, to open the debate for the government. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion before the House this evening is that e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. So for those of you that have never seen an e-cigarette, these are small battery powered devices that contain a heating element, which contains, creates an aerosol of liquid when it's, the user draws air through the device and passes it over some hot coils. Smoking in this case refers to the inhalation of the combustion pro products of tobacco, whether that be cigarettes, cigars, pipes, whatever. And the motion simply states that using an e-cigarette is an alternative to smoking that carries an associated health risk that is sufficiently lower that it can be deemed a healthy alternative. That's the definition of the motion. So smoking carries serious health risks. According to the Government of Canada, people who smoke are an increase of heart disease, of respiratory problems, of cancer. 30% of the people who die of cancer in Canada, it's as a direct result of smoking. The most common cancer is lung cancer, and 85% of lung cancer deaths are caused directly by smoking. According to the Canadian Cancer Society, 37,000 Canadians die every year as a direct result of smoking. I don't think it's debatable whether smoking carries severe health risks. It does. But before we can compare smoking tobacco and using an e-cigarette, we really need to understand just a little bit about how smoking affects your health. Of the 4,000 chemicals contained in cigarette smoke, hundreds of them are toxic. Things like hydrogen cyanide, arsenic, lead, none of them are very good. 70 different carcinogens, known carcinogens, exist in cigarette smoke. Now, according to Cancer Research UK, and I'm quoting, using e-cigarettes is almost certainly safer than smoking cigarettes. Now, for people who are combating cancer every day, who are scientists, saying something like almost certainly safer is as close to any of us get to saying absolutely categorically, without doubt, that's the reality. So why is that? When you breathe in tobacco smoke, the first thing that happens is you're inhaling tar. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen this demonstration, but my grandfather showed it to me when I was about five years old. He used to smoke a pipe quite frequently. And he inhaled the smoke into his lungs and blew it out again through a white cotton handkerchief. And when he'd inhaled it, left it in his lungs for a little while, there was a very mild yellow stain when he exhaled. He did the same thing again, but just brought it into his mouth and expelled it again through the uh, handkerchief. And this time, there's this yellow, sticky, gummy residue on the handkerchief. I was impressed. I couldn't understand why my grandpa would be keeping this stuff in his lungs. This is not good for you. He stopped smoking about a year and a half afterwards. He stopped drinking. He stopped breathing. He was dead. So not a very good way to stop smoking because tar coats the inside of your lungs and at the same time it contains a cocktail of carcinogens that increase your risk of cancer. On top of that, it brings in carbon monoxide which blocks the haemoglobin in your blood, making you get less blood supply to your brain, makes you short of breath. And if, as if that wasn't enough, there are all these oxidants that turn the fatty tissue inside your blood vessels into hard, very stubborn clots that can cause strokes, can cause heart attacks. So you'll notice I haven't mentioned nicotine at all. Everybody knows nicotine in cigarettes. But the reality is that nicotine is addictive and it has a level of toxicity, slightly more toxic than the caffeine in your coffee. But a 
according to Dr. Elizabeth Whelan, President of the American Council on Science and Health, and I'm quoting here, it is the smoke from the combustion of a lighted cigarette that causes disease and death, and not the nicotine. Smokers smoke for the nicotine, but they die from the smoke. Nicotine is not carcinogenic. So, fascinating so what? The so what is that when you take an e-cigarette and you're using that as a means to get yourself off of smoking, that little bit of nicotine in the e-cigarette is what satisfies the craving. And puffing on this little e-cigarette satisfies the habit that you've got into of smoking. And therefore it helps people give up smoking. But there's a problem. We've got an addictive material in nicotine that's currently unregulated, untaxed, and we need to do everything we can do to get smokers off tobacco. There's no question that if you're a smoker, then e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. But Health, Health Canada continues to bury its head in the sand and has yet to properly regulate this entire industry. E-cigarettes are safe, but to fully protect smokers, we need clear regulation and quality control on the production and distribution of the fluids that people use. How else can they be sure how much they're taking? Should we trust big tobacco to self-regulate? I don't think so. Hasn't worked so far. And secondly, e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. But they're not such a brilliant idea if you don't smoke at all. So we need to control the advertising and promotion of e-cigarettes and the liquid used in them. The same marketing clout that was used to promote cigarettes is now being used to make e-cigarette sex seem desirable, and that should not happen. Our governments need to act quickly and decisively to help cigarette smokers stop. E-cigarettes are an excellent, healthy alternative for smokers, but they need to regulate the industry to make sure that non-smokers don't start. Dr Peter Hayek from the Tobacco Dependence Unit, Queen Mary University in London, said e-cigarettes could have a revolutionary effect on public health if smokers switch from cigarettes to e-cigarettes. I urge you to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. I would now like to call on the Leader of the Opposition, Emily, to speak on behalf of the Opposition for seven minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Speaker, thank you. I'm not sure what the government is smoking, but I'm pretty sure he's inhaled. <laughs> he's made my arguments for me, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. Um, it made me think, when it was discovered when the, when the former mayor, Rob Ford, was smoking crack, I'm sure the professional advice given to him by his doctor or, the media or his media handler was not, try and drink a Mickey of vodka at work. It will, be, it will be less offensive to those around you and, and less intrusive on your health. No, he was given advice to go to rehab and deal with his addiction problem and, and remove any such crutch as the best way for his health. The government has, suppo has, suppo has supported this, this, uh, this notion. Um, so we're on the same page in terms of that smoking is, is, is the wrong thing to do. And um, the government, but he will have you believe that e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking, but we, he, the opposition, are here to clear the air. E-cigarettes are not a healthy alternative to smoking, and we intend to prove this using three main arguments. One, e-cigarettes can prolong the use of cigarettes as opposed to focusing on the healthiest alternative, quitting. They have, they have not been proven to be a smoking cessation device. Two, e-cigarettes are a way for cigarette companies to develop a new culture of acceptance around smoking. The negative societal views of smoking and its links to life-threatening diseases such as cancer and emphysema have served as a deterrent for many who may be considering smoking or motivation for quit smokers to quit. Three, e-cigarettes have not proven to be safe. Now to support each of these arguments. Number one, e-cigarettes can prolong the use of cigarettes as opposed to focusing on the healthiest alternative quitting. Smoking is an addiction. According to the American Society of Addiction Medicine, addiction is characterized by a person's inability to consistently abstain, impairment in behavioral control, craving, diminished re recognition of significant problems with one's behavior and interpersonal relationships, and is dysfunctional emotional response. 
Like other chronic diseases, addiction often involves cycles of relapse and remission. Without treatment or engagement in recovery activities, addiction is progressive and can result in disability or premature death. As the government has indicated, an e-cigarette contains less nicotine and other chemicals than a conventional cigarette. However, for an addict, this means in order to get the desired effect, the average smoker or vapor will more than likely be inhaling these devices for longer and more often than conventional cigarettes or the e-cigarettes can be used to augment an addict's current cigarette regimen, so to allow them just a little nicotine in public enclosed areas to tide them over until, until they can go outside where they can smoke the real thing. This is referred to as the dual use effect. While the government may argue that e-cigarettes can be used as a treatment program to aid in the quitting process, there is little to no data to support, to support this. Credible and reputable medical organizations such as the World Health Organization, the World Medical Association, the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, and the Forum for International Respiratory Societies all agree that there is a lack of rigorous studies and clinical trials to determine if e-cigarettes e can actually help people to quit smoking, and that not smoking at all is the desired end state for optimum health. Number two, e-cigarettes are a way for cigarette companies to develop a new culture of acceptance around smoking. Ever since it was announced by the American Cancer Society in 1954 that there was a link between cigarette smoking and lung cancer, there has been a battle of acceptance and action on the part of culture and societies around the world. Despite the numerous lines of evidence to support this finding, the first, state, the first statewide smoking ban was not enacted until 1995 in California, over 40 years later. Fast forward to today, 20 years from that date, at least in North America, smoking is finally frowned upon culturally. Culturally, this negative societal view of smoking and its links to life-threatening diseases has served as a, as a deterrent for many who may be considering smoking or provides the motivation for smokers to quit. As the e-cigarette industry grows, a subculture has emerged which calls itself the vaping community. Branches of this subculture include those who focus on modifying the technology to different, for differing results, those who seek to find e-cigarette models that are unique and unconventional and build a new lifestyle and imagery to go with it. Sound familiar? It has taken 60 years to battle this misinformation and the popularization of the smoking culture, which is a battle still fought today. Like the government has stated, there is increasing advertising related to, to e-cigarettes, which are similar to the campaigns in the 1950s and 1960s. Although these are, were banned and regulation is required, um, these, con these, these advertisements are creating a desire for traditional cigarette smoking. How different, really, from an onlooker's perspective, is vaping to smoking? The message of smoking is bad for you, period. Please quit. Gets muddled and camouflaged in the cloud of vapor. And the deterrent, deterrent message we have worked so hard to create and promote in the last 20 years gets blown away. Number three, e-cigarettes are not proven to be safe. The risks of e-cigarettes use are uncertain. This is due to there being little data regarding their health effects and to the variability of vaporizers and the variability in liquid ingredients in their concentration and quality and thus the variability in the contents of the mist to deliver to the user, as stated by the government. No long-term studies have shown that e-cigarettes are a healthier alternative. The health agencies of countries such as the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, and Australia and many other countries have all issued statements with regards to the unknown safety and long-term effects of e-cigarettes. And as, and as a result, none of these countries have endorsed the use of e-cigarettes as an alternative to smoking or even as a smoking cessation aid. As my second will point out, cigarettes still contain carcinogenic-like chemicals, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, chromium, and nanoparticles, in, which are nanoparticle in size, all which can potentially lead to lo local respiratory toxicity. If e-cigarettes have not proven to be safe, how healthy an alternative can they truly be? Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Speaker, don't let the government and their poofs of vapor prevent you from seeing the real issue. The facts are simple. E-cigarettes are not an approved smoking cessation aid. There is little to no proof to support this. The most healthiest alternative is not smoking at all, as stated by the government, but by prolong prolonging the use of e-cigarettes and promoting the acceptance of a, a smoking culture, addiction will not be cured. Please join me in defeating the motion, e-cigarettes are not a healthy alternative to smoking.
Thank you very much, Emily. I would now like to call on the member of the government, Sem, to speak for five minutes. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so the, opposite, the leader of the opposition uh, made some uh, very good points about um, not smoking at all. She, time and time again, she said um, that uh, it's not good to smoke and the only uh, thing that will fix uh, the issues with uh, smoking tobacco is not smoking at all. Um, well, that's true, we agree. Um, E-cigarettes isn't smoking, it's vaping. There is no smoke coming from the e-cigarettes. It's vapor and it doesn't have, like the Prime Minister said, all the uh, toxins that, um, that tobacco smoke has. Um, and uh, she also made some good points about uh, e-cigarettes. Um, now, let's be very clear here. Um, we're not arguing that e-cigarettes are healthy or that or they're safe. Um, on the contrary, we agree that e-cigarettes uh, do pose risks. Um, and by no means are we saying that e-cigarettes are a healthy activity. Uh, what we are saying is that as an alternative to smoking, which the Prime Minister has already outlined is a very terrible thing, causes a lot of problems, uh, e-cigarettes is a healthy alternative. If you are a smoker, e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative. Michael Siegel, a professor at Boston University's School of Public Health, uh, compares replacing tobacco with e-cigarettes to replacing heroin with methadone. Uh, methadone is a synthetic drug used to control pain and addiction, which, it's, which itself is addictive. Siegel says that while the replacement has its own inherent risks, it is still safer than the alternative. Now, ladies and gentlemen, imagine for a second that your diet consisted of just fast food. Consider for a minute that for breakfast you ate sausage muffins, for lunch you ate quarter pounders with cheese, and for supper you ate double Big Macs. Fries and Coke and everything. I'm sure we can all agree that that's probably not healthy, contrary to what the kids would probably believe. <laughs> I would suggest that as a healthy alternative, maybe you should, you know, not gorge on McDonald's for every day of the week, maybe only t twice a week, and instead, you know, maybe uh, uh, Subway sandwiches um, uh, and some pasta. Now, does that mean that that's the best alternative for you? No. Does that mean that, um, you know, Subway sandwiches and pasta is better than lean meats and, and vegetables? Of course not. But considering that you're consuming your body weight in sugar and grease, pasta and Subway sandwiches are a healthy alternative for you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the same goes for e-cigarettes compared to tobacco. People who smoke cigarettes, all they're trying to do is just get their nicotine fixed, as the Prime Minister has stated. And you've also heard from the Prime Minister that um, all the chemicals and the carcinogens in the smoke is what leads to the death. It's not the nicotine. In e-cigarettes, the smoke is non-existent. There is no smoke. It's aerosol or vapor. And it's far less harmful. It doesn't contain the significant amounts of tobacco-specific to toxins that are found in the tobacco smoke. A switch, to, a switch from, e from cigarettes to e-cigarettes means that now you've eliminated the thousands of chemicals that's going into your body. You've now just stopped the over 70 carcinogens that you, that you were inhaling with cigarettes. Um, as a matter of fact, you can actually use e-cigarettes to help you quit smoking. Uh, because you control the level of nicotine in the juice that you put in the e-cigarettes, uh, you can theoretically continue to reduce that amount until you get to zero. Just like nicotine gum, just like uh, the patch. Both, as we know, are very healthy alternatives. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to vote for the motion that e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. Let us not simply cast away 
the unfamiliar because of our ignorance or because of our experience with smoking. Let us use this opportunity to combat what the World Health Organization calls the single most preventable cause of death in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. I would now like to call on the member of the opposition, John, to speak for five minutes. Okay, e-cigarettes. So the government side is claiming that e-cigarettes don't have any type of toxins in them. I would like to refute that because I was online and I did some research, some credible research, from a website. And the website is www.sciencenews.org. And it's an article from the 3rd of June, 2014. And the first point is it states that e-cigarettes have high levels of nanoparticles. What are nanoparticles? The inflammation linked to asthma, stroke, heart disease, and diabetes. That sounds pretty serious to me. And as well, e-cigarettes have traces of solvents that transform into carbonase, a cancer-causing chemical, also very serious. E-cigarettes have only been on the market for just about over a decade, maybe 11 years, 10 and a half years, 11 years. So it's relatively new. People are saying it's the cool thing, it's the safe thing to vape. I'm going to take a life example from my own father. He started smoking regular cigarettes at the age of 13, 14 years old, when he was just a teenager, a kid. And back then, it was the cool thing. and. To certain people, it was the safe thing. So here they are with the cigarettes. <laughs> puff, puff. <laughs> this is the cool thing. This is the safe thing. However, a couple decades down the line, maybe 50, 60 years afterwards, he's in his 70s. And he's not the man he used to be. He's a former, he's a shell of his former self. He used to be a really fit guy. He used to run a lot. He used to exercise. He, he was in the military in Vietnam. And because of this habit, and because of ignorance, like you said, they didn't really know that cigarettes were bad back then, relatively new in the market. And they puffed and puffed away. And this is what's happening today with e-cigarettes. There has not been a lot of research going on with e-cigarettes. So today, people are vaping. <laughs> It's cool, it's safe, it's a better alternative to, to cigarettes. However, like Emily stated, I feel there, there needs to be more time and research before we can really embrace this new fad that we call e-cigarettes and vaping. So we need to really, really think clearly about the future generations ahead of us, our kids, our sons and daughters, are we telling them that it's really safe to take up a new form of habit to replace cigarettes when there's really not been enough research? And even right now, with the website that I provided you, it has a bit of, a bit of negative side effects from the research. Just imagine what would happen 20, 30 years from now when there's more research done by the science and medical community. And I could pretty be sure that there will be a lot more negative side effects with e-cigarettes. So voting against e-cigarettes, thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, now we would like to call on the leader of the opposition, Emily, uh, to sum up the case for the opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Speaker, what's wrong with this picture? Does that look healthy to you? Smoking is an addiction. We all agree, smoking is bad. But to use an e-cigarette is not so bad because it has less of those carcinogens. But 
aren't all carcinogens bad? Nicotine is addictive. Aren't addictions bad? Shouldn't we just try to get rid of them? The, 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 the resolution is, is misleading in saying that e-cigarettes are not a healthy alternative to smoking. It, it, it's deterring you from the real issue, which is smoking is bad for you, and we should do everything we can in our power to deter people from doing it, starting it, or, or, or getting them off of it. Um, e-cigarettes are not a proven smoking cessation device. There isn't enough evidence today to support that this, this is the case. So, and also there hasn't been enough studies to, to prove that um, they are safe because there are the, all of these unknowns about the variability from the manufacturers, about the, the contents. So, um, so as we have stated, um, there, there is, there is, it's better just not to start and not to influence others by, by making smoke, smoking cool again. Um, so please support us in defeating the motion um, that e-cigarettes are not a healthy alternative to smoking. Thank you very much, Emily. I would now like to call on the Prime Minister, Robert, to do the summation on behalf of the government for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking. The opposition made a few cases. Not smoking is preferred to smoking or vaping. We agree. Don't start. And if you can get off it, you should. But as Mark Twain said, I've given up smoking hundreds of times. <laughs> Does anybody not know a smoker who's found it incredibly difficult to give up? My sister smoked for 30, 40 years. The challenge is, if e-cigarettes are hugely safer, then wouldn't you encourage people to get onto e-cigarettes as a means to an end? The WHO report, I think, was, was quite misleading. And a number of people from some of the major addiction research places around the world have said that the WHO assertion that e-cigarettes prevent people from giving up cigarettes is not true and they are actually as helpful as buying nicotine replacement patches from the chemist. Banning um, e-cigarettes, how's that working for you so far? It's a $2 billion market in the US alone and that's just in one year. And e-cigarettes are not safe. If I am in the South China Seas and I am swimming in this water and there's sharks all around me, and there's a raft floats by, but it's Chinese made and it's got some paint on it and it might have lead in it. Am I getting out the water? Sure, I am, right? I'll deal with that afterwards. So do we know everything? No, we don't, but we know enough. We know that the main parts of smoking that cause our friends to die are the tar, the carbon monoxide, the chemical oxidants, the carcinogens. They simply <coughs> aren't there in e-cigarettes in anywhere close to the same quantities. So, the motion is that e-cigarettes are a healthy alternative to smoking, not that you should start. I urge you to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. That concludes the main part of the debate. I would now like to call on David to do the adjudication for tonight's debate. And David will speak for about seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Well, I'll try and be exactly uh, seven minutes and no more, but thank you. Okay, so first of all, this was a really strong debate. I was actually really impressed with everyone. This is a beginner's debate, so we see lots of new talent. I so I got to learn a lot new about our new debaters. So first of all, congratulations. That was a great debate. It can definitely stand on par with a lot of the strong debates we've had here. So I'm going to break down the debate in our in terms of our five pillars that we talk about. First being argument, second content, third rebuttal and reputation, fourth teamwork, and fifth style and rhetoric. So I'm gonna talk about each side on those, on those terms. So first of all, argument. This is what formed the basis of your case. To the government, beginning with the prime minister, we got the points about the severe health risks and it's smoke, not the nicotine, and three, still being used as an addictive agent. And on the government seconder side, we also had, yes, there's an agreement that it is unsafe, 
but also compared it to food, less carcinogens, and you can control the nicotine dosage. So I thought on the government side, lots of really good arguments. On the opposition side, prolonged use is uh, and has a progressive effect. It's, it's, uh, it creates a new culture of acceptance around smoking, and it's not proven safe. From the opposition seconder, talking about the ignorance that comes from short market exposure, and talking, continuing to talk about the health risks of the alternative. So lots of really great arguments from both sides, and that, that's excellent. But I will talk about the, uh, the argument from the, the Prime Minister. I thought you spent a bit too much of your time talking about those severe health risks, like you really just overdeveloped. And I was looking at my watch wondering when you were going to bring up the e-cigarettes, because that was the first word of the motion. So that, that took a while to get to. But otherwise, that was great. Um, I was able to pick out where your arguments began and ended, but I found that it would help a lot if you were to just say one argument this, two argument this. It would just it would help the audience figure out where your arguments are, and it would make things a lot easier to just kind of pick them apart or, or put them to back together. And uh, content, we had a lot of great research on both sides today. On the government side, we had all kinds of sources: Government of Canada the uh, Canadian Cancer Society talking about the carcinogens, and also the, the uh, Prime Minister went into a lot of specifics about the actual medical effects, so your, the, the detriment to going into too much detail on the argument side became a benefit of the content side, we just had so much information, so your points did, come, did go somewhere. And we had less content from the government seconder, but it was poignant content, it, 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 attacked, it attached very nicely to his arguments, so that was, that was, well, that was excellent use of content. On the opposition side, we had a lot of great content from the leader of the opposition that went everywhere. I had tons of things written down here, couldn't fit them all in, lots of great content. And they all connected nicely to your arguments as well. And now, John, opposition seconder, the, the order in which you, you, you had one source, um, sciencenews.org, and that preceded your argument of it. So I wasn't kind of quite sure where that was going to go. You began with the source, and then you had an argument to back it up rather than backwards where you would say, here's my argument and here's a source giving it some kind of proof or some kind of evidence. So that was just, it was a, it was a strange use of that evidence and so for, for that reason it didn't kind of resonate with me, it didn't come across as very persuasive, but that's just uh, a little bit more time of practicing how you can organize and structure your presentation, then you can use that great source with your arguments to make it connect a little better. Rebuttal and refutation. This is almost what it came down to because we had lots of preparation from both sides. But the rebuttals, the, the Prime Minister can't rebut, so the only rebuttals from the government side came from the government seconder. And the government seconder nicely walked through the arguments that the, government, that the opposition brought up and then attacked them one by one, spending a, a good amount of time on each. But not too much time because he had enough time to talk about his main arguments, which was great. And, but. Conversely, I didn't hear very many rebuttals or refutation points at all from the opposition. And Emily, leader of the opposition, I felt because, because of how well prepared you were, you didn't have very much time left over to fit in those rebuttals. And there was a lot to hit there. Like that third argument about still being used as an addictive agent, I thought that was too far and I thought the government shot himself in the foot. And I thought that would have been a perfect time for you to sneak a rebuttal in there, but you left it alone. And I think that was just because you didn't have enough time to reorient. So it was, and I wrote down here, you had a brief once over with a one liner about their whole case, but that was insufficient for me to really reward many points. And uh, same for the opposition seconder, I think that you uh, neglected the other side entirely and, and didn't mention anything that the, the government seconder mentioned. And uh, you kind of just left, left, the, left it alone. And there would have been a lot of room to put in a lot of rebuttals there. So on that side only, it's been pretty even up to this point, but rebuttal and refutation, this one is where the government has, has edged out a little bit. And then going out to the, the teamwork point, this is where the seconders have to kind of come in and build up their, their, their leaders. And so for the, uh, for the government side, I found that both speakers were on message. And I was worried about that because I was worried about Robert's point about, I thought where he shot himself in the foot again, I thought, okay, he's making too many concessions about it being unsafe. But they were on message and even if a bit conciliatory. So I thought it was that fine line and I was worried if the two, if the two debaters don't get that balance right, they're gonna really, kind of shoot, well, they're gonna both shoot themselves in the foot. But I thought they, they really did a nice job tuning that and so credit for that goes to the government seconder. And I also thought that the opposition also had a nice clean message that they had an abolitionist position and so they were on that position. And again, even if conciliatory a bit, but I found that neither speaker really bolstered the other speaker. Like I didn't hear much reference to the, uh, the opposition seconder in the summation, nor did I hear any reference to the main points 
by your leader the, uh, to the opposition seconder. That would have been a great point to kind of connect your points back to your leader's case. And so that's where the leaders, that's where the leaders and the seconders kind of fit their teamwork together. And so I'll make the last few points about style and rhetoric. First of all, everyone was very clear. Everyone was, like in terms of just speaking and public speaking, there's, there's almost nothing to fault you there. That was, that was excellent. So in terms of just getting up behind a podium and speaking, no, no, no points can I take off there. But I will make a few points because we're doing a debate here. Uh, I had to take one point off of the, uh, of the Prime Minister for, for staying out of frame a bit too often. I, I happen to know that's a, that's a Toastmasters thing because I know that we want to be more at ease. You want to be able to walk into the audience and talk to people. But just because we have a camera here and also we're trying to teach a bit more formal style where you are behind the podium and you remain the, behind the podium for the debate, that's just a style point, and I've already talked too long about that. And I've also mentioned that you had a bit too much new information in your summation. And I shouldn't even be mentioning that in style, but I should have mentioned it earlier. And uh, government seconder, uh, perfect. I didn't really have anything for you to improve on in terms of style. Your pace, organization, structure, persuasiveness, presence, excellent. Almost done, I promise. And Emily, I really enjoyed your clear the air, puff of smoke. You had a lot of really fun. Uh, one-liners, again, which I said weren't, weren't very good in the rebuttal side, but in terms of your style and, remem and remembrance factor, I think that it, was, it was high and it rewarded you there. So that's, that's where that came from. Had to take a couple, more, a couple points down for it looked like you were reading a lot, which is because you were so prepared, you then had to read a lot more. So this is where you kind of have to balance where all those points are coming from. And opposition seconder, I thought if you could just balance your use of time a bit and adjust your pace to kind of fit the amount of time that you have there, and then that will make sure that it doesn't seem rushed or that you've left the audience wanting anymore and that you've kind of cleanly closed your case. And speaking of cleanly closing my case, I now am going to mention the scores. So I've given this to the government with a score of 74 to the opposition's 47. So if I could see the leader of the government. I'm the speaker. Is it? Oh, thank you. I've forgotten and neglected to mention who the best speaker is, so thank you, Michael. The best speaker tonight goes to Sem. <laughs> Without any handicap that he is a, a brand new debater, but simply because he had the best all over approach. He had excellent arguments, excellent content, well connected to those arguments, excellent rebuttals, excellent teamwork, and excellent style. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, and the, um, the popular vote agrees with the adjudicator tonight. It's the government eight and the opposition two. So congratulations. Oh, oh,